man, he's greater than great. He's awesome. He's mighty. He's holy. He's high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. But thank God I found out where the temple was. I found out I was the temple of the living God. And when the Lord comes into his temple, everything else gets silent. Glory to God. The Bible said, be silent, all flesh. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. How many of you know you can get your body just as still as you want to? And it still just be a pile of mess going on around you. Amen. You can get in the room and say, oh, I'm going to get quiet and oh, I'm going to rest. And you can still sit down there and get so nervous and just it don't do a thing. But when the Lord raises up in His temple, in what the Bible calls His holy habitation, I want you to know every bit of your flesh will get still. Every bit of this mind that's been in a world will hush. Everything that's been loud and noisy will get quiet and calm. And according to the book of Revelation, he knows how to turn a raging sea into one transparent like glass. He knows how to get that thing so still that there's not a wave or a noise or nothing. And then you can see clearly. You can see clear. You can't see clear when everything's stirred up, and you can't even look in the water when somebody's walking around and stirring up the muck and the mud on the bottom. Amen. You need them to be still long enough for all of that muck to settle. Because how many of you know that that which is of the flesh is not going to continue to whirl around when the Spirit of the Lord is in operation? It's going to lay down. That's the reason when you're in a turmoil, you don't need to seclude to an island. You need to get in an environment and an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost is moving. Because the Holy Ghost will calm that flesh down. It'll give it a tranquilizer. It'll make it hush because no flesh is going to glory in His presence. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the presence of the Lord comes into manifestation, we know He's ever present. No glory to God. He nowhere is absent this morning. He filleth all things. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's ever present, ever powerful. Amen. And He's all sufficient. But... We have times when the presence becomes tangible and feelable and touchable and it's called manifestation. It comes into an island or a realm where we can encounter it. Yes, yes. That's where you've got to get your flesh. It's in one of those realms where it can encounter the glory of God. Because you can tell it to hush and it won't. And you can tell it to behave and it won't. And you can tell your dumb mind how many sometimes you some days you got a dumb mind just will not be quiet. And you can't get it. And you'll try to put on worship and try to do everything you know to do. But how many of you know when you press on into that realm where the glory is, all of a sudden what looked like the worst thing in the world, it doesn't need nothing no more. That yesterday you thought you couldn't even get your next breath. But today there's a smile on your face and a glory in your soul because you've encountered that realm of His glory and His presence and His anointing. Can you say amen? I'll tell you, you may be seated. Uh, when uh, when uh, Brother Edwards, our pastor, got in his latter years, especially the last two years, uh, he would, uh, the last year he would uh, uh, take a service a week. He got to where the last, especially six months, he would do usually his Sunday night service. But bless his heart, I watch him come out of that house and I'd be parking over here to get out and look just almost like you just pick up one breech's leg and throw his leg. He was so weak and so sick and so pale and it didn't look like he could even make it across the street but he'd drag it wouldn't drive over he'd drag he'd make himself drag across that road even if he had to fall on the seat when he got here and then he would get up to preach and sometimes during the middle of his preaching it would come on him again and he would just sit out on the altar and say if everybody will get up and reach their hands out and pray the anointing back into me I believe I'll finish this sermon and they would get up and pray and strength would hit that body again. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like the anointing of God. Nothing like it. That's right. Amen. That's right. And I'll tell you what. I say uh, take away the pews, take away the windows, take away the drums, the organ, the piano, the guitars, and even if we have to, take away the singers, but don't take away the presence. Don't take away the anointing. Hello. Amen. 
It's the most important factor. But how many of you understand that everything I've just described from the people to the music to the singing to the worshipers is what's attracting the presence and the glory of God. There would be an anointing in this house if you weren't in this house. Glory to God. There wouldn't be any tangible touches in here today if there wasn't nobody to touch. Can you say praise the Lord? And when you learn to yield yourself completely to that round, you can do just about anything you'll ever have to do or need to do or want to do because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Can you lift your hand? Would you like to just glorify Him one more time as you've been seated this morning? Thank Him for that anointing. Hallelujah. What a beautiful, beautiful spirit of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, sweet, holy spirit.
of the Lord today. And as you're getting that ready, if you'll stand with me, we're going to make a proclamation of our faith and giving today to the Lord. And we're thanking God that everything we put in His kingdom has a return on it. Amen. One end of it makes something happen in the kingdom. The other end of it rolls it right back around into our life multiplied over so that we can reinvest more things into the kingdom of God. How many want to be able to just build things? And, and I'm telling you, I always said, I want God to make it where if the missionary says such and such needed and a home needed over here, I don't want him to have to 20 and 10 and 50 it out. I want to be the one to jump up and say, Brother, don't even worry about using the offering on that. I've got that covered. Amen. I want to make something happen for somebody. Amen. All right, let's say it together. This is my seed. God gave it to me. I now reinvest it into his great kingdom for the working of the ministry and I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. Amen. God bless you as you come this morning. Praise the Lord. He's in the midst of the storm. He's in the valley we walk one, two, or three
begin to thank God, He's right here in your midst. He never leaves you and never forsakes you. I know that in our flesh and our emotions, as Pastor Matt was saying a while ago, we can just feel like we're all alone. But feeling is nothing more than a feeling. It's not a reality. It is not a truth. Amen. Sometimes feelings are just the wrong reaction to a situation that's going on around us. But as I've been saying so many times recently, and I think we've even posted it, Katie has, is I don't live my life by situations. I live my life by the supernatural. So I want you to lift up your hands right there and I want you to say, I'm not living my life by my situation. I'm living my life by the supernatural. Now I want you to go ahead and praise Him like you lost your mind this morning. Just give out a shout of praise. Just, <laughs> Just let out a big old laugh, a big old shout of joy. and don't lose your shout. Amen. But um, I was thinking just a little bit ago, I was thinking how, how the two of the greatest days of your life is the day that you're born in the natural and the day that you're born again in the spirit. And everything before and after that, hallelujah, just becomes added bonuses, benefits, and blessings of God on your life. And one of the promises of the word of God is that with a long life, he'll satisfy you. I think satisfy is a key word in this meeting this morning. Because I just broke out earlier singing that song about he satisfies. That wasn't even on me. I, when I began to, you know, just exhort with that scripture how he satisfies our mouth with good things. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And I begin to just feel such, such a prophetic release of God. That you need to know this morning, Pastor Matt. Glory to God. That God is satisfied. Satisfied has to do with the desire of your heart, man of God. How many of y'all believe that? Come on, let me have some amens up in here this morning. Because we want to decree and prophesy over this man of God. Yeah, he's my nephew, but he's a man of God. He's, I believe he's an apostle. I don't know if he identifies with that yet or not. But I want him to know. I believe in the spirit realm. He's an apostle of God. I know he's a prophet of God. And he's a wonderful pastor. Amen. But I want him to know that by the spirit of the Lord, the prophetic utterance of God to you, son, is that God is going to satisfy the desire. Your desires are beyond what you see manifested in the natural, even though you've seen the goodness of the Lord. But God said, I'm going to bring shocking results of manifested desire. God says, I'm going to satisfy them because there's a hunger there's a craving on the inside of you to see these things done. Well, they come on Isaiah. And God says your heart is much like that of Solomon. You don't long for it for only yourself. But you long for this 
desire you have is for others as well. And God said, because you have been so unselfish in your desire, God said, I'm going to bring wealth and honor and riches to you on a personal basis. Hallelujah. And that which is upon you will begin to flow throughout this place and upon all those who are connected with you. And God says there's a new strength and there's a healing that's coming on you. There's a healing that's coming on you this day. Hallelujah. Therefore, from this day forward, you'll be able to run this race and the pace and the glory and the anointing that God has placed upon your life without any physical hindrances, delays, or detours. So everything shall be satisfied. With a long life, God said, I'm going to bring deliverance to some things right now. Because I promised you that I would deliver you even when trouble would come. And I am delivering you and my favor shall be mighty upon you in every area, says the Lord of hosts. So get ready for the days ahead are greater, bigger, and more profitable than the days behind, says the Lord of hosts. Y'all begin to worship the Lord and praise the Lord now. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise for that word this morning. I didn't make that up. That came out of the Holy Ghost. And always remember that whatever falls on your leader is trickling right down to you. So stand up on your feet right now and say, I'm under that umbrella. Hallelujah. And that river and that anointing and that favor and that honor and those riches and that wealth that is on my man of God is right down to me because I'm in the body. And all that's on the head gets on the body because the head is connected to the body. There are no severed body parts. You're connected. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he who abides in me, glory to God. I said, he who abides in me. And that's my word, abide in him. He shall act so whatsoever he will. And it shall be done. And so we're going to honor this man of God. We're going to honor this pastor, this leader. We're going to honor the man as much as we're honoring the man of God. That's as important. Amen. To honor the man as much as we do the man of God. And how are we going to do it, church? We're going to sow into his life today. And first of all, I just want to say, uh, express my gratitude to every one of you who are here today. Uh, I talked with many of you over the last few days, contacted you either by message or by phone. Amen. And if I didn't, it's because I didn't know you and I didn't have a way to contact you. But equally, you are here this morning and you get to be a part of this celebration. So I'm going to ask those who will, Pastor, if you don't mind, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. If you'll stand down there. These men and women who love you so dearly and appreciate how... You have been a rock in their life. You have brought revelation. You brought healing and ministered to them and their families. And to every need, you take time out and make it a point to see to it that they're taken well care of. Now they want to take good care of you today and celebrate your birthday. So if y'all will, just come and bring your gifts and your cards, whatever you have for Pastor this morning. Put it right in his hand. Love him and give him a wonderful, wonderful day.
blessings. I like big blessings. Can you say amen? I, my most favorite thing is uh, to say I want to be blessed to be a blessing. I don't know what your goal is, but I want to make everything better. And if I go into anything of somebody's, I want it to be all the better because I've been there. The Bible says when you go into another's house, well, glory. You're supposed to bring a blessing in that house with you. And if they don't receive that blessing, you know what you do, don't you? You knock the dust off your feet. You don't carry that spirit out with you and tote it for days. You always hang out where you're celebrated and not where you're tolerated. If people don't celebrate your presence, don't cast your pearls before swine. Learn to get among a crew who understands you, who wants you to feed them and who wants to feed you. And you grow together. Amen. And one of the things that will, that people are str struggling with in this hour is they're just being sapped dry by the people around them who don't know how to flow together and celebrate. Well, the blessing don't work that way. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Amen. So if you are in the midst of something that's just being sorrowful and rubbing against you all the time, you need to pray for the Lord to connect you with somebody who understands how the favor and the blessing of God is supposed to work in your life. Every house is to be better because you entered that house. Every meeting ought to be better because I'm in that meeting. I ought to bring something with me everywhere I go that is an asset to the kingdom of God and causes things to be better. And in better it means somebody's load's going to get lighter. Somebody's burden is going to be replaced. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's the kind of life we're supposed to be living. And once you start making that happen for other people in your life, you will unlock, unloose, and open up the windows of heaven. And I'll tell you what, the Bible didn't say it trickle. He said, I'll pour you out blessings. Everybody say pour. He said, I'll pour you out blessings. That you have room enough to, don't have room enough to receive. What he meant was I'll pour and I won't quit pouring. I'll open something up that'll never be shut again. I'll make something happen that'll eternally change things for your situation. We fail to realize this is that this is our connection to the invisible. This is how you get things to come forth. Do you understand that one night Joseph laid down? A just a prisoner like he always was. Same old bed, same old room, same old jailhouse. Come on now. And the next morning when they woke him up, well, glory, before dinner, he was sitting on Pharaoh's throne as a prime minister over all of it, the largest nation known in the world that day. So one thing you've got to understand is if you don't stay plugged up with this invisible realm, and the only way you can do it is by faith, then you can't, you, 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 everything you need and desire is around you right now. Everything you need is in this room right now. You won't ever have to go. Listen to me, folks. I want to tell you something. Even if it's healing of your body, glory to God. Your answer don't have to be down there at that physician's office as a, as a healer in this house. It, glory to God. Wealth and riches, honor, gifts of the Holy Ghost, revelation and wisdom, understanding and knowledge is not something you go looking for way out yonder down the road. It's right here all around you. It's called the spirit realm. It's called the spirit realm. And we've been studying this, preaching this, reading this, talk, God's talked to me till I tell you I don't think he's got no other subject these days concerning that scripture in Romans 1 that said the invisible things are clearly seen. 
clearly seen. How do they clearly see? Because I can look around me today and everything I see used to didn't be here. Everything I see never did exist. Everything I see from the mountains to the trees to the bird of the air to the beast of the field, glory to God to the water in the sea. It was nothing. It was dark. It was blank. It was chaotic. It was out of control. It was in an abyss and that abyss was deep. But when God settled down on top of that abyss, He began to hover and flutter and move by the Spirit. And when He did, He spoke out of that realm. And when He spoke, the visible came out of the invisible. Yes, Lord Jesus. Now I'll just tell you, you really want to know what I was sitting over there? Uh, sat back over there thinking a while ago, I was thinking about when Jesus looked at all of His disciples in John 14 and said, don't let your heart be troubled. Glory be to God. Don't get upset. I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't get nervous. Don't get concerned. Don't get messed up in the head. Don't get troubled. Don't get out of sorts. Don't get out of time. Don't get out of rhythm. Don't let nothing break the flow. I've got to tell you something. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. He's invisible. Believe also in me. I'm the visible expression. I'm here because God's here. God's here this morning because I'm here. He's here because you're here. You are that Word made flesh in this house. Your presence here tells me that there is a God. Hallelujah. There is a spirit realm. Don't let your heart be troubled. Quit getting upset. Quit getting out of sync. Quit letting things get you down. Stop all of that. You believe in God, believe also in me. Then the Lord turned around and said, you don't know this, uh, you've not seen this, but this whole thing is just one big house. It's called the Father's house. Uh, I've made provision. Uh, I've made a way. Uh, I've planted you somewhere. I've put you somewhere. You're not out here wandering around helpless and hopeless. Uh, you're not just an accident waiting to happen. You're not just a coincidence or just a number for somebody to put on the senses. Uh, you're in the Father's house. Uh, I've made provision for you. And then he said, not only that, but I want you to know in my Father's house there's many rooms, there's many houses. Come on, somebody. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you I'd go to prepare a place for you. I love all my friends and all that have watched this. I want you to hear me and hear me well. He did not go to prepare heaven. Heaven was already prepared. He made the heaven before he ever made the earth. Hallelujah. The Bible said the heaven and the earth and all that dwell therein. He didn't leave to go prepare heaven. Heaven has always been prepared. What he left for was to open up a way for you and I to come into this abundant life and walk in the fullness that he's called us to walk in. How come our shadow of a higher? He went to open up that inner veil so that we could begin to live out of that other realm. Glory to God. Woo! Where did he go in just a few days after he said that? He went to Calvary. He said it's finished. He died. He ripped the veil in twain. He gave up the ghost. Nobody killed him. Nobody murdered him. Nobody took his life from him. He said, I lay it down of my own accord. And if I lay it down, I will take it back up again. Oh, I'm a son of a higher. He said, I go to prepare something for you. I go to open up the way. For you to get into this life. For you to get into this Holy Ghost. For you to get into this fullness. I'm telling you now, there was a way there. And they couldn't see it. And in preaching to them in John 14, he told them they couldn't see it. He said, whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. But they said, we can't see it. We know not whither thou goest. Neither know we the way. But Jesus said unto them, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man, he of my ocean, no man can come unto the Father except by me. He was a door. He was a door to the sheepfold. If you come in any other way, you was trying to thief, steal, 
and rob your way in. Well, Jesus said, I go to pre prepare a place for you. Now, the reason he's talking to them this way is because the Bible said he had just got done telling them, I go away. And their countenance fell. They didn't understand what going away meant. Don't get on them, the church don't neither. You want to amen there or play safe? You play safe and I'll get bold and preach. How about that? The church now don't know it. They don't understand what he meant when he said go away. They think he, they think he went on a long trip. They think he totally disappeared. Let me tell you something. All he did was go back to the glory that he once had with the Father. All he did was step back over into that supernatural invisible realm. Let me tell you something about that invisible world. It's all around you. It's all in this room right now. Oh, come on, South Thailand. Oh, hallelujah. It's all around you. I could read you lots of text, but I feel the preacher's anointing, so I might as well preach. You can read the Bible when you get home. You read this one I'm preaching to you. It's the living word. Amen. And the Bible said that Jesus said to them, He said, I go away. And if I go away, I prefer, but if I go away, I'll come again. And I'll receive you unto myself. That part I am, now here's the key to it. He wanted you right where he is. In the same realm, in the same anointing, in the same name, in the same power, in the same person. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, this is much more than you loading up on a ship. This is you getting a revelation of what exists on the inside of you that the Father said to through the Son, the only reason I am going away is because I've got to make room. They just wanted me now. Well, glory. I'm bound to this body. I'm in a flesh tabernacle. Oh, no, I'm inhabiting it. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among you. There's one of me now. But if this corn of wheat can fall into the ground and die, it'll multiply. And I won't just be with you. I'll get in you. Hallelujah. Woo, I'll get in you. I'll come on in. I'll take my bone. I'll move on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, oh, glory to God. <laughs> when he said, I go away, and then another time, right, just to jump two chapters over, and he said to him again, it's expedient for you. It's the utmost necessity, the thing that is needed right now. Paul said it's more needful for you that I remain in the flesh. But Jesus said, it's more needful for you that I move out of this flesh so that I can go back in to that glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Well, are you with me? Do you see what I'm telling you? You've got to take hold of this invisible stuff. You're living too much in the natural. You're living too much in what you see and you're letting what you see dictate your life. And what you see does not dictate your life. It's what you don't see. You set your affections on things above, not on things beneath. The rent being due, and the dog needing a shot, and the kids needing whatever, has nothing to do with your life in Him. Your life in Him is full, whole, complete. If you will anchor yourself behind that veil, then everything on this side will line up. How do you know it? Well, because the Word says if I seek that realm, if I seek that realm, then everything else will come in alignment. Everything else will add up. See, we're trying to get God to get in our mess. He's trying to elevate you and put you in a, in a place in Him where all things flow freely, rightfully. Oh, glory to God. Without hesitation, 
I, I'm telling you, you can get miracles in that realm. Hebrews 11, you can die and you can die without the promise and you can have a few miracles. But what about 40 years of miracles and still no faith birthed in you and you turn the 11 day journey into a 40 year circle march around the same mountain. Now I'm getting quiet. If you, if you want to march for 40 years, because the church has done, done that over 40 years, they done outnumbered. Bless our hearts. We've even passed Israel up. I hope them Israelites ain't poking at us this morning and saying, well, at least we just did 40. I tell you, for years and years, men have run around the same mountain, chasing the same mess. Oh, glory to God. Hoping for the same thing. Look up here and listen to me. If it ain't happened yet, you better get you some new revelation and find out what God is saying in this hour. If he said he'd bless me and I ain't blessed, somewhere I ain't plugged in to what he said. I need to blame God for the lack in my life. I need to plug myself in to where it flows. I don't come in here and jump all over that light if it don't burn. I go find out where it got disconnected. When I find out where it got disconnected, I'll fix the connection and the light will come on again. Glory be to God forever. Oh, hallelujah. I'll just serve you buffet. Now get over here on the bread aisle again. Let's get some more of that. Hallelujah. In the midst of all this, the thing the disciples could not wrap their mind around was his going away. It, it scared them. It terrified them. Because they had put every egg they had in that one basket. Three and a half years, they sunk their life into that. Well, glory. Whether they believed or not, they went. Whether they understood or not, they followed. Whether they even knew what he was preaching or not. And you run off and leave because you say that word's too deep for me. They didn't know for most of three years what he was preaching. That's the truth. But they followed on. They followed on. And then one time he really got preaching in John 6 and they all left him. And he turned around and said to Peter and them, Y'all want to go? And Peter said, To whom shall we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Are you listening? They followed him. Or oh, they said it out of their mouth. Master, we'll follow, follow thee with us wherever thou goest. Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. By the time the night comes, won't be a one of you here. Peter said, I'll never, I'll never leave you. He said, before the cock crows three times, you will have denied me. Well, glory. And just sure as Jesus said it, just as sure as he said it, it happened. When he got down to the cross after he preached three, when he first started preaching, he had multitudes. When he got to the cross, he couldn't even find but two that would stand faithful with him. And the greatest group that kept to him all the way to the resurrection was the women. Hello. So you may not believe in women doing anything in the church. You won't have much of one if you don't turn the women loose. Because they take up all the they take up all of where the men fall short. All Pentecostal churches have twice as many women membership as they do men. Those men drags around and claims to be big and boisterous, but they let their wife do all the warfare and the praying and keeping the home together. All they won't do is jump up and get the medal for it and wear the crown. I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't been for women carrying the word, the word wouldn't have never went very far. They'll call a woman a missionary but won't let her be a pastor. Well, Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching to you. Amen. They'll call a woman a missionary but won't call her a prophet. Call a woman a missionary but won't call her a, a preacher. They, oh my God. And let me tell you something. Folks and women carried that word. Mary carried that word nine months before a man ever seen it. And she was the one who went and preached to all them men who ran because they were scared to death. They was locked in a room hiding. She got up and said, I can't take this no more. I've got to find out what's going on down there. Praise the Lord. They came spices and oils and ointments, but he'd already been anointed for his burial before he ever went in there and before they ever had time to get to him he got out and rent the veil from the inside of that tomb and made his way forth amen and told Mary you go tell my disciple and go tell Peter that I send a 
under my father and under your father. Hallelujah. Well, glory. So all of these things, you see, make up the gospel. Make up how it works, how it operates. What they couldn't wrap their head around was, if he leaves, how can we have him? And he was standing there telling them, when I leave, I'll come again and you'll have me. You'll experience me. You'll come into something. Well, glory. In John 16, he said, I got many things to say to you. And you can't handle them now. But I'm coming back to talk to you. And when I do talk to you by the Holy Ghost, you'll perceive these things. You'll understand these things. For he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Can you say praise the Lord? And so what exactly happened was they said, we don't understand. Uh, one thing we need you to do is to show us the Father so that it sufficeth us. In other words, we, we can't just take this uh, the way you're saying it. We need to see something. We need some, some outward evidence that this thing is going to work. But the problem is God is completely and entirely invisible. He's a spirit. And the spirit cannot communicate or walk or talk on earth without a body. So God said, said already through the prophets that sacrifice and offerings is not cutting it. I want to I want to get in the midst of you. I want to talk to you. I want to minister to you. I want to hold you. I want to touch you. I, I want you to handle me. And in order for that to happen, glory be to God, it won't happen through sacrifice and offerings. It won't happen through symbols and signs. Symbolic things are wonderful, but they are not the manifestation. They are only prophetic faith visions for us to lay hold of the true manifestation. Hebrews 10 tells us that as long as the Old Testament tabernacle was standing, it was a sign to us that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. But when the real tabernacle, the Lord of glory got here, He showed us the way glory to God. The way to what? The way of life. The way to have an abundant life, the way to have understanding, the way to prosper, the way to be in health even as our soul prospers. That's right. That's right. Any other way, he said, you're as the thief and the robber. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What they sought to see couldn't be beheld with the end. Let me tell you something about God. He's invisible. I said he's invisible. I'll tell you. Oh, I'll give you some scripture. I wrote these, these scriptures down, been trying to read them to you for three weeks and, and hadn't got to them yet. I want to read you first of all. This is 1 Timothy 1, verse 17. It says, Now unto the King eternal, who's immortal and invisible, the only wise God. He's immortal. Well, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll never die. He's not subject to mortality. He's not subject to corruption. Not only is he immortal, he's invisible. Not only is he invisible, he's the only wise God. There ain't no other God. They just won. They just won. Let me read you now 1 Timothy 6, 15 through 16. He said, He is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings, Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. Right. My God. He only hath immortality. Come on, somebody. God is your spirit. Now let me tell you. God is your spirit. Hallelujah. That's right. Half no human. Half no flesh. Well, glory. No, sir. He's only what? Immortal. That's not all. He dwelleth in a light that no man approaches. He dwelleth in a light. You know what that tells me? The closer I get to Him, and the deeper I go into that light, the more that this atom is going to die and fade away 
this flesh is going to lose its hold on me. It's kind of like going over there and trying to study and can't figure out where Moses, the Lord said, no man could look on me and live. And then Moses turned around and God said, I commune with Moses face to face. And somebody has to wrap their mind around how God said, nobody can't see me. And then the next verse he said, Moses, come look in my face. What it means is simply this, in the year of King Uzziah died. Come on now. In the year old Uzziah died and got out of the way, I saw the Lord. And if you want to see the Lord, you can't see Him through your denominational eyes, through your religious eyes, through man-made talk, the doctrine of lies. You will have to, all of that's got to die and melt out of me until I look into Him with a full spirit. Glory to God. Let me finish my verse. He said, He only hath immortality and dwelleth in light which no man can approach whom no man hath seen nor can see. You can't see Him unless you come by the way. And that's the reason why the blessed disciples said we want to see Him. And those Greeks said in John 12 we would see Jesus. And what were they doing? Somehow can I connect with that God who is invisible somehow can I lay hope? Do you know that the world today, one of their biggest problems about coming into the church is they can't see God and they can't know God in the natural and they can't know, oh, hallelujah. And then I will to give you another one. Now this is wonderful. You've heard me preach this one many times. This is in 1 Timothy 3.16 and without controversy, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest. Come on now. <laughs> Show us the Father. <clears throat> God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, and received up in the glory. Oh, come on, come on. Hallelujah, shandalah, Oh, praise the Lord. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen by angels, preached unto the Gentiles. And then after he got through with all that cycle, he went right back into that glory that he came out of. And in John 17, when he got done praying to go back into his glory, he began to intercede as a high priest of your soul. And he said, and now, Father, I pray for thee. A glory be to God. Hallelujah. If I'm not careful, I might have a spell right here. Father, I pray for them. He prayed for himself to come back into that glory. But then he said, now I pray for them that thou gavest unto me. Thine they were, but you glory. I don't know if you know it or not, but before you was your mother or father's, before you ever was this world, you were his before the foundation of the world. That's why you're still here when you shouldn't be here because your destiny goes way deeper than just the surface of your family and genealogy. There is a word seed that begot you in the beginning you are eternally created and conceived of God. Well, glory. <laughs> for you yet come to a day when I'll not speak come to this babes I'll not speak come to this carnal but yea the Lord saith I will speak unto you as spiritual sons of this household of faith saith the Lord I'll not order it down but yea ye are strong enough now to receive the meat of my word and I shall begin to feed you with the fatness and the fullness of my glory in this hour saith the Lord yea even as Joseph seen in Pharaoh's dream and vision it is the time that the lean calf shall become the fat calf for I'm swallowing you up with my glory saith the Lord hallelujah 
Jesus said, Father, the hours come glorify me. He did not say another glory. He said, glorify thou me with that same glory. Who will I raise your hand right now and thank God for the same glory. I'll bring it on further to you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. This same Jesus. Not another man but one. One glory. And according to Paul's teaching, if that glory touches your flesh, you won't have the same kind of flesh. But there's the glory of one flesh and the glory of another flesh. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord.
Somebody say praise the Lord. And some days when you can't even barely get your mouth out of that raging sea to draw one good breath, you ought to make every adversary in your life tremble by saying, He'll keep me. Glory be to God. I sing often to myself, I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I committed unto Him against that day. I've kept it. He's kept it. He said, my covenant I'll not break. They're all of the things that have gone out of my lips. The Lord God is the same unto a thousand generations and He's rich unto all of them that call upon His name. Amen. God is not a man that He should lie, nor the son of man that He should repent. Hath He said it, and shall He not do it? Hath He spoken it, and shall He not make it good? Behold, I've received commandment to bless, and the Lord hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. This thing ain't going to turn on me. It's not going to run out. It's not going to decrease. It's not going to leak out. I am filled with the fullness of God. There's too much of this, people. Jesus said this, y'all done not let the other undone. There's too much uh, of all this trying to space it out. Get it all. Get it all. In Him dwelleth all the fullness. And so the Bible said, I got to quit. He said, um, you ought to have to try to end this. He said, you gave them to me. He said, and I kept them. And I kept them through your name. Now he said, glory to God. He said, I want you to keep them now. I'm turning this thing back over. To his eternal destiny. You keep it. And then he said, Father, I pray for not only these, but I pray for all the rest of them that's coming home after them. He said things like, glorify them with that glory. He said, Father, I would that them thou gavest me be with me where I am, that they may Behold my glory. He said things like, Father, I pray not that you take them out of the world. Hallelujah. Glory. Some folk just swallowed a marble when I said, I pray that you take them not out of the world, but that you keep them through your own name. If some of you get as eager to overcome as you were other things, we could sure see a restoration in the body of Christ and shake this earth to its foundations. Why don't you set your suitcase down and pick your Bible back up, get full of the Holy Ghost, and realize God ain't through yet. There's something else to be said. There's something else to be done. There's something else to happen. It ain't over, folks. I'm just coming to tell you, you can like me, love me, you can stick your tongue out at me if you want to, but it ain't over. My God, it ain't even not started good yet. They're coming a shaking worldwide restoration move of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Something has got to birth and bring in the manifestation of the sons of God in this hour. Creation is growing forth. The earth is shining forth. There's a travail on. Glory to God. Amen. And Jesus prayed us through to a glory. He interceded as a high priest of our soul. And he said, uh, oh, glory to God. Let me leave that and close. We're going back to where I started at. He said to them when they cried out the no, oh, show us, show us, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long? We've walked together three and a half years. Has it not dawned on you yet? Has it not been made clear to you yet that if you've seen me, you've seen my Father? Now we go back over the work and minister of Jesus and read where he constantly operated in this knowledge because he himself said, I can of myself do nothing, but it's the Father within me that doeth the works. See, here's what the deal is, folks. The Father was not a huge, happy-looking, 
bald man sitting on a natural ivory throne. That was not the Father. The Father was in him. The Father was the Spirit. The God is the Spirit. We have got to get a hold of this. God had enthroned himself in that human form and Jesus said the works that I do is my Father doeth the works. He said he worketh hitherto and I work. I cannot do anything except I see my Father do it. I cannot say anything except I hear my Father say it. Somebody say praise the Lord. My God. And, and when, they, when he began to teach them this, what he was teaching them was, if I remain singular you'll only know me as I am. But if I go back into that glory, I will what did he say? I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now let me tell you, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, I feel the anointing. Ten days after he got up on that and he got up out of the tomb ministered for forty days and nights in his resurrected form. He led his followers out to Bethany, ascended into glory, and ten days later, glory be to Jesus, I said ten days later, there came a sound, not from earth, from heaven. Not a quiet, meager, mild, lovely, sweet breeze, but a rushing mighty wind that came in that house, and he filled all the house where they were sitting. No longer in a body. Oh, come on now. No, no. Well, 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 well. What's happening? It's the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost? Resurrected Spirit of Jesus. He ain't dead no more. He's alive. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Well, what did that accomplish? He got rid of that natural body. Well, praise the Lord. Took on a glorified body. Ascended into the heavens of God. And now he's moved into his permanent dwelling. Well, glory to God. And you can try all you want to. And, and you, you can make it sound just as lovely as you will. But you'll never get God to sit down in a man-made house again. He's dwelling in these temples right here. And you can say he's going to rule in one in whatever country you want to. But Jesus Christ will never sit down again in a natural earthly house that's been built. You are hanging on to fads and you're holding on to shadows. He ain't in the shadows no more. He dwelleth in an unapproachable light. Somebody say praise the Lord. God, I feel a Holy Ghost. There's people so much they said that their whole picture of how this thing will end up is a natural Jesus sitting in a man-made temple. If that's the best you can do, get out of here. We don't want that. We're looking for a demonstration and a manifestation of the glory of God. Not another picture for somebody to paint, but a living demonstration of everything that He is in and through and by His people, His church, His bride, amen, His sons in this earth. Does anybody believe what I preach to you? If you do, you ought to get up and shout at Amen. And thank God that the Lord has given us the word that he's given us this morning. Hallelujah to God. Oh, Shabande. Oh, glory. 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 Hallelujah. God ain't never going to dwell in honor natural sacrifices. No more. No, sir. Preach it all you want. He's ended that system. He's got a new system. Well, I pull shutting up, I feel the Holy Ghost. He'll never again function in that order no more. He's moved out of that rap. He didn't live in the tabernacle. He don't live there no more. He lived in Solomon's temple. He don't live there no more. He lived in Zerubbabel's temple. But he don't live there no more. He's found the body that he dwells in. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Well, glory. I thank you've had all you can handle for one service. We bless you today. We love you. Thank you, thank you a thousand times over for that wonderful blessing for my birthday today. That was wonderful. I love you all so very much. And we will be back together at 6 o'clock this evening. I didn't say a word about our business. Shannon, who you got with you this morning? Ashley, I've met you. Yeah, well, bless you. It's good to see you. And Sister Ginger, who's your folks today? This is a friend of uh, at least 30 years. 
Okay. We're like mother and daughter. All right. So she's like my child. All right. So this is like my father. This is Brother Rick Pescoloni, and he's been a real blessing in my life. Okay. The Lord with all of his amen, amen. Well, we're blessed to have all of you here today. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful uh, day, dinner, afternoon. Get a good nap and come back and help me shout tonight. Amen. <laughs>